people talk about the craft as a religion. There's nothing wrong with that. And if that's how you approach the craft, that's fine. To me, the craft is an art form. As an art form, it requires practice and experimentation and a doing, a regular doing, just like with any art form, whether it's music or painting, and to keep an open and questioning mind, to recognize that on one hand, to be a good artist, you need to have skill. and You need to practice those skills, and those skills are important. And then on the other hand, you need to be able to have a sense of experimentation and play, trying new things. To be a good appreciator of art, you need to be able to look at a piece of art with a questioning mind. For instance, you might see a painting of a bowl of fruit, and somebody will tell you that artists created a bowl of fruit. But when you're appreciating that piece of art, You can do better by saying, but is it a bowl of fruit? Is that what this is? There's a pop musician named Kate Bush. and I remember thinking, oh, great, because I hadn't heard anything from her in in so long. And I I was reading some reviews, and there was a lot of people talking about, oh, now she's writing a song about a washing machine. (sighs) She wrote a song about a washing machine. Can you believe it? It's a song about a washing machine. And I thought, okay, well... To hear the song about the washing machine. So when I bought the album, I listened to it and I thought, is it a song about a washing machine? Because that's not what I got at all. I got a song about loss and regret and loneliness and despair and memories of a different life. I did not not get that this was a song about a washing machine at all. If we can learn to question and ask about what the art is rather than come in with a, an idea of, of what the art is and, and project that idea onto the painting rather than allow the painting or the song or whatever it is to reveal itself to us because of our questioning mind. Now with the craft, it's an art form as well, but it's an art form that doesn't use always physical media. It's the medium of the mind. And the results that we get from that are results that then we get to question because we get to be the appreciator of the art as well as the so-called creator of the art. And that's what makes magic and the craft so different from any other art form is that you're not giving it to a market. You're not creating an art form for a specific market and then that market either buys the art or writes articles about the art or whatever. It's all for you in your life. And you get to be both the creator and the appreciator at the same time. And when we, for instance, do a spell for something very practical, when the results of that practical spell come about, it's very easy for us to start to get very pedantic about it. Just, well, my spell worked and I got the money. Yay. But did you really do a spell for money? And was that manifestation really just about the money? Or is this a piece of art where you get to ask, but what's the money for? Why do I want the money? And what's the money represent to me? You see, there's so much more there for us to look at than just, well, I did a spell for this and then I got that. It's a great and deep creativity that we have to plug into in order to make magic work. And when we start to relegate our craft to something very sort of superficial, we end up blocking our own appreciation of the great creativity that we were a part of to even create that experience in the first place. So it's extremely important for us when we approach our craft to approach it from the point of view of a questioning mind. When we look at what we're about to do, the spell that we're about to cast, for instance, we look at that blank canvas. We look at that blank sheet of music paper or that keyboard or whatever. We look at this and we ask ourselves, what is it for? Why do I want this thing? 
And what does it mean? What is it going to bring to not only to my life, but to the world? Question, 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 question. There's so many wonderful things that you can bring to that spell. Yeah, it's a bowl of fruit in the painting. Yeah, it's a money spell. Yeah, it's a song about a washing machine. Yeah, it's a spell for a job. But what is it? What's the underlying creative principle involved in that? And what does it represent? And that's when we start to get into the soul of our craft, get into the soul of the work that we're doing. And that's so much more satisfying than just another money spell. So much more satisfying than just a job spell or whatever it is. But having said all that, it's very important also that we do have effectiveness in our craft. We do want to have skill. We do want to have technique. We do want to actually have the results. We do want some photorealism sometimes. Because even though there is that underlying greater purpose to whatever we're doing, we still want to have the effect. Very frequently when people come to magic, they come for money spells or they come for job spells and, or healing. So it is important that you have effectiveness in your magic. And you don't want to discount that when we're talking about the deeper meanings behind it. When we're coming to the craft as artists, we want to have both. We want to be able to have that practical, realistic experience that we are bringing to our work while at the same time understanding that it represents so much more than meets the eye. And that we as artists here are both the creator and the appreciator of it. Because of the law of secrecy that you bring into magic, nobody really understands your craft but you. Nobody's ever going to really appreciate your art form but you. And maybe a few of the colleagues that you work with. So you have to learn how to be both the creator and the appreciator of your art form and understand that there's so much more going on than what appears on the canvas. A lot of times what happens is we have a difficulty having the manifestation that we want. When people come to magic and even the the ones that are maybe more experienced at it, sometimes they don't get what they want. They get something, but they don't quite get what they want. And just like an artist who gets frustrated that they really wanted that painting to really look like a window, and it doesn't, that's a question of technique. So then they have to work on a more pragmatic level for a while to build that technique into their repertoire so that they can have that realism that they're seeking. But then, once they bring that realism into being, they have to also be able to learn how to compose their art in such a way that that realistic piece of glass or that realistic window brings more to the painting than just the realism. I hope I'm making sense. On one level, when we're working with the craft, we want to keep our understanding that there's more to our magic than meets the eye. But at the same time, we have to work at our skill level so that we can bring about the results that we want. One of the reasons why we can't many times bring about the results that we want is because we lack the technique. We lack the skill. And so to work on our skill to bring about specific results is very important. But it's not the end of our story. We want to bring about those particular results for a greater purpose. For a greater purpose, a deeper experience than what appears on that canvas of our life. It's very easy when we think esoterically to kind of excuse ourselves from not having the results that we want. It's so important that we don't let up on ourselves when we don't get the results that we want, that we go back to the drawing board and do it again and again and again until we get what we say we want. Understanding that that's not the end of the story. It's not just about the money. It's not just about the healing. It's not just about the job. There's a bigger picture there. 
But within the bigger picture, it's up to us to focus our craft in such a way that we hone our skills so that we do get the results that we want. Again and again and again. Both can be true, that there's a greater purpose, that there's a greater meaning to our craft than just the money spell. But at the same time, if our money spell doesn't bring the results that we say that we wanted, we need to go back to the drawing board. We need to fix that. We need to practice more, become more skilled in that. I went to a Picasso museum in Spain several years ago. Huge. I didn't know that many Picassos existed under one roof. It was like, whoa. And the way they have it set up is you start in the early period and you go through the periods of his work. And each room is dedicated to a different period. And we think of Picasso and we think of a lot of abstraction, but that's just because that's what he wanted. But he didn't practice that until he mastered his photorealism. Because if you start toward the earlier parts of his work, he was a skilled artist. Same with Andy Warhol. People think of Andy Warhol as being, you know, abstraction, pop art, but he was a skilled painter. He was very good at what he did. And the same needs to be true for us. We can't just have this laissez-faire idea of our craft and expect it to make a potent difference in our lives and in the world if we can't master having specific results come about. And the good news is that life is constantly giving us things that we need. What's in front of you? What do you need? Now it's time for you to create that. That's when we talk about things like the sphere of influence and the the steps of spell casting and the witch's pyramid and having some real technique, having some real technique and real skill to create specific results. But understanding that that's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to have a deeper experience of our craft, having more complete and satisfying artistic experience of our craft. That satisfaction is always going to be transient or even non-existent if we're not getting results. So there's no excuse for us to not get the results that we want. We have to get back to the drawing board and go again and again and again and keep honing our craft so that we get what we say we want. Now, that's not to say that you need to try to expand your sphere of influence beyond what is organic at this moment. You have to be where you are. But there's a lot where you are that you can make happen. There's a lot where you are that you can upgrade your technique, that you can upgrade your skill level and create a result and organically expand that sphere of influence. And When I was in music school, I used to have a professor that would go through the practice rooms and would, when it was time for a lecture, we'd come back and say, you know, I'm so sick of listening to you guys practicing what you do well. That's not what the practice room is for, is for you to practice what you do well. I want you to practice what you don't do well (laughs) so that you get better. You, You already can play that, so stop playing that so much. Start playing the sections that are causing you problems and don't just excuse yourself from fixing those problems, from fixing those mistakes. And the same is true for us. The same is true for the craft. Don't give yourself excuses for not having the results that you want. Instead, you go back and practice and work through it and fix it. Clean it up. Slow it down. Pull it back. Break down your goals into smaller goals. Work on smaller little bits if you need to. But get the results that you want. And then, yes, eventually, as you start doing that, you you start having a satisfaction that your craft is a greater art form than what it appears to be on the surface. It's not only about the money. It's not only about the healing. It's not only about whatever your goals are. It's about a greater artistic experience, a greater satisfaction. The satisfaction comes from executing it in a way that's very skilled and that has great results and that you can depend on those results because you've practiced. You've practiced. 
And there's all kinds of techniques. There's all kinds of cool techniques that you can use, and I try to share those with you as I can. But it's not so much that you chase after the next technique, it's that you take your basic principles and you hone them. You become good at it. Some people say, oh, you know, on your witch's primer, I, I just, I had such a hard time on the fire body. Well, okay, it's hard. So you just t- take it slowly and you do your best. You get better and better at it. But you don't just avoid the fire body because they, the water body is easier for you or whatever it is. It might be the opposite for you. you. You work on what you're not good at for a while and you get better at it so that you have a balance. You have a balanced craft. You don't just avoid not being able to visualize. You work on it. You work on it. You may not be very good at divination. Well, that doesn't mean that you avoid divination. That means that you practice it, that you work on it. Maybe you don't have any sense of psychic skills yet. Well, then you practice those. You start with what you, where you are. You practice what you're not good at so that you can get the results that you want when you want them. Reminding yourself that as an artist, as a witch, as a magician, as a person in the magical arts, that there is a great work going on. You're part of a great work. Your life becomes your work. And you are a success. And you do make a difference. But you do that through practice. I don't want you to get down on yourself. That's definitely not helpful. But you don't let yourself off the hook either. You say, I'm an artist. I'm a witch. I'm a magician. Whatever you want to call yourself. It doesn't matter. Those labels are not important. I'm going to practice until I get what I want. I'm going to practice my skills. I'm going to become better and better at it by having a daily practice. And I'll know how I'm doing based on the output, based on my output. The artist knows that they're good based on what's on the canvas or on the piece of paper. The musician knows that they're good based on the the piece that they're playing. You know that you're good based upon the results that you get from your spell. Sometimes when things manifest, it isn't exactly the form that you thought. That's fine, because it's even better. But you don't accept failure and just say, well, I guess that's the will of the universe. No. No, 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 no. It's not just that it's the will of the universe. It means that you need to go back and fix it. You need to go back and practice. You need to go back and do it again until you get those results that you want working within your sphere of influence and not allowing yourself to have anything but success. A lot of times success comes after many failures. Welcome to the craft. Welcome to any art form. You're going to have many failures, but for the purpose of practicing until you start getting the results that you do want. Reassessing, am I not getting what I want because I'm trying to play a piece that's too hard for me or trying a skill that I'm not there yet with? In which case, let's come back into my sphere of influence better and start working on something that's more attainable for me. Building on our success. Don't let yourself off the hook. You are going to become better and better at this because you're practicing. And then that practice starts to reap great rewards for you. And then those rewards build upon the next rewards, upon the next rewards, and it starts to snowball but not because of any other thing than that you came back and you tried again and you practiced and you worked at it and you didn't take no for an answer. So let's really focus this week on our skill level and start getting the results that we say that we want. And if we need to alter the size or the scope of what our spell happens to be and pull it back a little bit, so be it. But you're going to get those results that you want. And you're not going to stop until you do. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be.